Well, number 15 then from this specimen paper here, nine marks. First part for two marks is just do this little derivative. If this is f of x, what's f dash dx expressing your answer as a single fraction for two marks? Well, since it's a logarithm, you might as well use that property of logarithms, which allows you to just split that apart again. So be log n of 1 plus x, been dividing, so subtracting log n of 1 minus x. Then you can differentiate it. However, simply splitting it gives you the first mark. Now the derivative, well that will just be 1 over 1 plus x, and multiply by the derivative, well that's just 1, and that will be 1 over 1 minus x, but multiplying by the derivative will be multiplying by a negative 1, which will turn that into a plus. Write your answer as a single fraction, well that means it's going to be over 1 plus x times 1 minus x, yes I know, you see what that comes to. So you're going to have one of these, that's 1 minus x, plus one of those, which is a 1 plus x. So on top, the x's will disappear, just giving you a 2. And underneath, that's the pattern for the difference of two squares. So you can write 1 minus x squared, and there's the second mark. Now, if you had neglected to use that property of logarithms to split it into two simple parts and just did it as the derivative of the logarithm straight away, it'd have ended up a bit messier because you'd have had to do one over this, but then one over that rather than writing is the same as the reciprocal, so it'd be 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Then multiplying by the derivative of this would be, well, square the bottom, and then differentiate the top, so that's a 1, leave the bottom alone, minus, leave the top alone now, it's been done, and differentiate, multiply by the root of the bottom, which will be a negative 1, so that now you've got, and of course that'll cancel out that part, so underneath I've just got 1 plus x times 1 minus x, this part is just 1, and this part comes to, I better put in a bracket just now, you've got 1 plus another 1 making a 2, and the x's minus and plus will cancel out, so you're just left with 2 over 1 minus, that's the same pattern, x squared. So doing it that way would have been 1 for doing that, and 1 for simplifying it, and in fact there's not much to choose between the two. In part B then, for 7 marks, you've got this differential equation, this first order differential equation to solve, and it's given you a couple of values so you can get the particular solution to it for these 7 marks. Well, this is a linear. y and dy by dx only appear to the power 1. There's nothing else happening to y, things like cos of y or y squared. So rearrange it into that linear form, which would be just make it dy by dx, whoops, and then it'll be something times y. So to do that, divide everything by cos x. So dividing this side by cos x gives you tan x over cos x, which you could write. But I think I'll write that because you recognise what's happening as upside down x, the reciprocal, I mean upside down, cos x, the reciprocal of cos x, sec x, tan x, because you recognise that. And on this side, the cos x cancels out just to leave you 1 over e to the sec x. Now, you could have left that as tan x over cos x. It's up to you. However, that was the first part recognising you had a linear first order differential equation and putting it into the standard form where you've just got some function of x, this part here, multiplying the y. Now the way you solve this is by using an integrating factor. So I'll work out that integrating factor at the side, which is you integrate this and raise it, raise it to the power of e. So it's e to the integral of sec x tan x dx. Doing that gets you a mark. 
Now, I deliberately put it as sec x tan x because you know that one, that's a standard. That just goes back to sec. You can even see it here, look. That was very suspicious in the, the first place. So integrating that just gives you e to the sec x. And of course, you don't need to bother with the plus c, which would have resulted from that integration because sec x plus c would just be a multiple would be a power of e, which would be a multiple of e, which would multiply all the parts and cancel out anyway. Now, doing that result gets you a mark. Finding the integrating factor. Now, you could just state the result. Multiply everything on both sides by this. Should put that back to just a product of this times y. But I think I'll just show that. So I've got e to the sec x dy by dx plus, I'll put this first, sec x tan x e to the sec x y equals, and multiplying this side just gives you 1. Now, if this has been done properly, that should be an exact product. That should be the product of these two parts, y times e to the sec x that being the derivative of y, and this hopefully being the derivative of this, and it is. e to the sec x stays e to the sec x and gets multiplied by its derivative, which is sec tan. So I can see I've definitely got d by dx of e to the sec x y equals one. There's the fourth mark. So integrating both sides just puts this back up because that was d of this which just goes back up to whatever it was. But the other side will have to be the integral of dx. So you've got e to the sec xy equals, and that'll just be x plus c. That's worth a mark. Now I can just put this in to find the c. So that's e to the sec of 2 pi, sec 2 pi, times 1 is x, which is 2 pi plus c. So what is sec of 2 pi? Well, that's just 1 over cos of 2 pi. And the cos of 2 pi is 1, so it's 1 over 1, which is 1, so that's just e to the power 1. So that just says e equals 2 pi plus c. So I can put this back over here. e to the sec xy is x plus and c will be e minus 2 pi which means y will just be that whole thing divided by this x plus e minus 2 pi all over e to the sec x and there's not a lot you can do with it forgot finding the value of c was a mark and of course finishing it off is the final mark